Good afternoon, and thank you for joining Senator Murkowski and Senator Sullivan's virtual town hall. My name is Mike Anderson, and I'll be your moderator this afternoon. Now, today we have some special guests back on the line with us. Again, Alaska Department of Labor Commissioner Dr. Tamika Ledbetter, as well as the Division of Employment and Training Services Director Patsy Westcott. In just a few moments, I'll turn it over to our hosts for some very brief opening remarks. But before I do, I'd like to take a quick moment to let everyone know that if you'd like to ask a question during this town hall this afternoon, please press star 3 at any time and you'll be connected with an, uh, an operator. Again, if you'd like the opportunity to ask a question this afternoon, please press star 3 to enter the queue. With that, we'll turn the mic over to Senator Murkowski. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, uh, Senator Sullivan. This is our, I believe now, our sixth Town Hall, they're becoming a regular Thursday uh, event. I, I appreciate the opportunity to get on the line with Alaskans all over the state talking about um, some of the updates from Washington, D.C., but hearing the concerns from folks around the state as we are, as we are dealing with this COVID pandemic. Um, this is a good opportunity to, for us to, to hear directly from you. We know that even though uh, we've, we've been in the midst of this now for several months, uh, we passed the CARES Act uh, almost a month ago, there are still many unanswered questions as the situation continues to evolve. Uh, we're working hard to, to get the programs and the funding that we have put in place out the door to those who, uh, who are in need, whether it is uh, our small businesses, whether it's the direct assistance, whether it's the help uh, with the expanded unemployment insurance, whether it is assistance to to our schools, to our health care providers, uh, to our airports, um, it is an all-out effort to address not only the health impacts of, of COVID-19, but also the economic impacts. Uh, I think we recognize that in Alaska, we're seeing unprecedented job loss, uh, and it is throughout uh, our various sectors, whether it's in the visitor industry, whether it's in our oil and gas sector, uh, it is at, at all levels. Our, our small businesses, our restaurants, um, our, our child care facilities. So uh, there has been a great deal of, of impact on, on our division of unemployment insurance. So to have uh, our labor commissioner, uh, Dr. Ledbetter with us again, and Patsy Westcott, the director of employment and training division, who also oversees Alaska unemployment insurance, to have them back is, is really uh, greatly appreciated. The labor department, the U.S. Uh, labor department reported 3.2 million unemployment claims filed last week um, over 33.5 million estimated jobs lost in the past seven weeks. So uh, we we understand um, truly through the statistics the the economic devastation. Uh, but we hear personally um, from those for whom this is not a statistic. This is their business. This is their livelihood. This is everything that they have worked for, and. Uh, making sure that we have an appropriate federal response is, is absolutely key. We also know that the way that we get uh, back to work and back to school is, is through uh, appropriate, adequate, and, and rapid testing. We are back in, in session in the United States Senate. Uh, we came back in on Monday. I've had several votes. Um, uh, but in my view, the most, uh, probably the most important part of my week was participating in uh, a health education um, committee hearing where we had the director of the uh, National Institute of, of Health with us discussing how we can uh, build out rapid development of new tests for COVID-19. Um, through through really a, a shark tank type initiative that will that will not only um, develop different tests uh, but also move them into production rapidly so that we can get them out uh, and and available not just for those uh, on the front lines um, in our in our health fields who desperately need them 
but back into uh, all sectors uh, of our economy. And again, so so we can get students into university in the fall, kids back to school, uh, our seafood processors um, safely working, and, uh, and 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 be able to really get our economy back and, and going. A couple of quick highlights before I turn it over to Senator Sullivan. Um, we have seen some of of the uh, the federal programs that we've put in place uh, starting to, to again get the dollars out the door. We just received um, the NOAA implementation plan for the uh, fisheries assistance uh, funding under the CARES Act. Alaska will receive uh, $50 million uh, in that account. I've been waiting for, for that. Uh, we have been, uh, just in this past week, the, the funding that has come to our higher education uh, institutions, uh, mental health and substance abuse um, services. Uh, our community health centers have uh, been receiving funding around the state um, in, in significant uh, quantities. We are we're continuing to work through the uh, the issues related to the to the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program through the SBA, um, and and realize how incredibly important that program has been. The effort uh, working with Senator Sullivan and Congressman Young to make sure that our seasonal workforce was appropriately accounted for was in incredibly important for for Alaskan small businesses. I wish that I could say that the EIDL, the Economic Injury Disaster uh, Loans, was working equally well for us. It is not. Um, I, I had a conversation as recently as 25 minutes ago with the head of Region 10, and uh, our reality is is that the, the funding that we had included in that uh, second round um, will will be distributed or will be open only for those in the agriculture sector. While that helps Alaska's uh, small farmers, and we certainly appreciate that, I also recognize that there are many, many, many Alaskans not in this sector who had been hoping and waiting. This is a, this is a recent determination coming out of the SBA with no notice. It, it wasn't the intent of, of Congress that it be limited to that. This is an issue that uh, Again, you're going to find your delegation continuing to uh, to, to push and, and and address and and hopefully aim to aim to correct. Um, other things that I might just mention uh, very very quickly um, with regards to the economic impact payments, um, we have continued to see those payments coming out from the IRS. These are the twelve hundred dollar. Um, Payments to individuals, if you have, have not received or feel that the amount that you received uh, is, is not um, clearly understood, uh, don't hesitate to, to contact our offices to, um, uh, to seek some, some level of clarification on that. Uh, I know that there are many questions that folks have, and uh, I want to make sure that we can fit in as many calls as possible tonight. So I'm going to, to wrap up my comments um, and thank, again, those that are with us tonight from, from the State uh, uh, Department of Labor, and thank my colleague, um, Senator Sullivan, for his great partnership as we're working through these, on these issues on behalf of all Alaska. So thank you. Well, thank you, Lisa. It, good, e uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Senator Sullivan. And um, first, thank you for being on another one of our Teletown Halls. Um, and I'm also very appreciative that uh, Dr. Ledbetter and Director Westcott are back. Uh, they did a really good job uh, a couple weeks ago. A lot of questions on the unemployment insurance issues, so we're uh, honored to have them back to take all of your questions. I wanted to just reiterate a couple things that Senator Murkowski mentioned. Um, the Senate is back in session full-time. 
right now, I think that it's important for a couple reasons. One, to signal to the rest of the country as we in Alaska and other states start to open up. We still, of course, are uh, focused on the health of our citizens, but as the governor announced recently, we're looking at phase two of opening up, and the health of our citizens also depends on an economy that's getting back to work. So the Senate's getting back to work, and we're demonstrating here that we're able to do that with social distancing, but holding hearings, marking up legislation. Yesterday, for example, on the Environment and Public Works Committee, we marked up and voted out of committee unanimously the uh, Ports and Harbors Bill. This has a lot in it for Alaska related to water and sewer, to a strategic Arctic port um, in western Alaska. And the broader message that I think is important to send is the legislation that we're now starting to work on is really focus on our economic recovery as a state and as a nation, and we're going to need that when we're working on it. Uh, related to what Senator Murkowski mentioned is that the CARES Act was primarily focused on resources through as many channels to our state, our fellow Alaskans as possible, individual checks, the PPP program for small businesses, unemployment insurance, fisheries, which were just announced today, state and municipalities, uh, tribal, hospitals, airports. We are working to get resources through these challenging times. No, it's not a bailout. It's what happens when state and local governments, th through guidance from the federal government, have shut down the economy. We have to help our fellow citizens get through this. That's what these resources are meant to do. Of course, uh, there's frustration. We have frustration. Some of these federal agencies do it well. Some don't do it well. Some of it do it in a fair way relative to our state. Some maybe not so much. So we certainly share the frustration that many of you have. We want to hear about it tonight. And you have our commitment we have strong staffs who are working around the clock seven days a week that if we can't answer your question here, we'll get back to you and we will try to help uh, with all of our resources on any individual case you have or ideas that you have. That's an important part of uh, these teletown halls. Uh, one just statistic, as of May 1, the Paycheck Protection Program in Alaska had processed uh, over 8,700 loans for small businesses at approximately $1.3 billion. I do want to thank our financial institutions, uh, the banks, the credit unions in the state. I've talked to many of our executives there. Uh, you don't get out 8,700 loans in two weeks without having people in your banks and credit unions literally working around the clock. Again, there's been frustrations, bureaucratic snafus, particularly from the SBA, but uh, the, the people uh, who are working around the clock, I just want to really thank them. Um, we were uh, announced today, the NOAA announced today that the caps that they have on the uh, disaster assistance for uh, fisheries, Alaska got the highest amount. It's still not enough at $50 million, but as we've mentioned before, the fact that we have a program and can replenish it with, when the opportunity presents itself, we think is important. So, again, we want to hear from you, your ideas, your frustrations. We are here to serve all of you. We work for you, and uh, we want to hear how we can help. And I know that having the expertise of Director Westcott and Dr. Ledbetter on tonight's Teletown Hall will be very helpful uh, to us and to our fellow Alaskans as it was a couple of weeks ago, which is why we invited them to come back. So I look forward to hearing your questions and comments, and uh, thanks again for joining us. 
Thank you, Senator. Now we'll turn it over to Commissioner Ledbetter. Thank you so much. Greetings, everyone. Greetings to the senators, uh, Senator Murkowski and Senator Sullivan. Thank you for the invitation to join you again this evening. We're glad to be here. We very much appreciate participating in this particular forum. And as both senators uh, mentioned early, and I just want to echo that sentiment, we believe in the importance of making ourselves available to answer questions from local Alaskans specifically about unemployment insurance this evening. And so we all know that the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has placed uh, the Alaska Department of Labor and Workforce Development in a critical position, and we have had to execute a statewide rapid response to ensure the immediate coordination of jobless benefits and relief for Alaskans. Despite this unprecedented strain to our unemployment insurance systems due to the economic disruptions caused by COVID, my team continues to demonstrate their tenacious commitment to serving every affected worker. This has been an enormous task, yet time and time again, the Department of Labor and Workforce Development employees are rising to the challenge, and I'm proud of the work um, that they're doing, particularly Director Westcott and her UI team. Since early March, 70,000 claims were filed. And of those 70,000, over 54,000 claims have been paid. In total, $164 million in benefits were paid out so far. And even though that is a record success, we recognize that we have some new unemployment insurance applicants who may still be experiencing challenges with navigating and understanding our system, primarily those who are self-employed, gig economy workers, and independent contractors. Our goal is to make sure everyone is served appropriately and expeditiously. So Director Westcott and I are here today to answer any questions and to provide additional information to help clarify or even mitigate ongoing <clears throat> concerns. Again, we appreciate the opportunity to participate. We don't want to uh, belabor the time to give people an opportunity to, to ask their questions. And so we thank you for allowing us to be with you, and we look forward to answering any questions about our unemployment insurance operations that the public may have. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner. And with that, we're gonna go straight to the phones. But first, just one more reminder, if you'd like to ask a question today, Press star three at any time, and you'll be connected with the operator. Uh, with that, we're going to go to Gabriel in Anchorage, who has a question for the senators. Hi. Uh, my name is Gabriel. Um, McKilly, i got a small hotel here in Anchorage. Anyway, we're having issues with – I understand people need unemployment insurance, but a lot of people, we need employees, and they don't want to go to work because we don't pay as much as they can make home – if you make $23 an hour, why would you go to work for 13 So, I mean, do you see how long does that extra unemployment last? I mean, because we need crew, obviously. So my question is, how do you fix that? Gabriel, this is a, this is a question that we heard uh, several weeks ago when we had the, the commissioner and Director Westcott uh, with us. Um, this this is is something that when we were just before we were passing the CARES Act, um, the, the the reality of this unintended consequence that you could actually have an individual making more uh, on unemployment with the expanded unemployment with the additional six hundred dollars a week uh, than they actually were at their place uh, of employment and and it would have this perverse incentive to not work to not come back to work and so there was great discussion great debate on the floor there was actually an amendment uh to to address and correct this um both senator sullivan and myself supported that that uh, measure because as 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 much as as it would have Complicated our 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 unemployment um, system in in Alaska in terms of how you would structure the program to do those payouts. It just it it is just not what we intend to do to pay you more to not work. That's just that's not that's not the American way, quite honestly. 
And so uh, what we were trying to do was to, to, to move with a level of expediency that, um, that just said, look, in order to get unemployment insurance um, out the door quickly uh, with an expansion that will help to offset or ameliorate uh, the, the loss of job that we knew was going to be dramatic, uh, it, we moved forward with that, uh, even though we were not able to correct it in, in the legislation itself. I think the important thing is the expanded uh, unemployment insurance does not uh, continue throughout the year. It is it is a four month uh, extension, so it will expire. And I'll I'll ask Director Westcott for just confirmation. It's my understanding that it expires um, the first of July. Um, but I I I do understand and hear and and appreciate what you are saying. This is something that as we have looked to to things that we need to address in, in future legislation. Um, there is a great deal of discussion about how we, how we address, how we correct for this. Um, I do think it would probably be instructive to hear from, from the director about um, the, the, the impact to our unemployment insurance if we had gone to um, anything other than a flat fee payment. Um, but it is that it is that flat amount on top of the base state amount that has caused just the problem that you are speaking to. Senator, may I jump in? This is Commissioner Ledbetter. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add um, for Gabriel, just so you know that we have sent out an advisory to all employers. And just so you know, from the uh, department standpoint, uh, our perspective is if an individual is able to go to work and do so safely, we're, our expectation is that they return to work. Um, if that employment is available, the workplace is safe, um, employees cannot continue to receive unemployment insurance benefits. Frankly, our, our, our system isn't designed to uh, pay jobless benefits indefinitely. And so if you um, have work available for your <laughs> workers, um, we ask that you um, contact us, let us know about that, and that way if that employee does not have just cause, good cause, then they are no longer eligible for unemployment insurance. And Director Westcott, feel free to jump in if you need. Yeah, well, <clears throat> so thank you, Commissioner, and thank you, uh, Senator Murkowski. Um, uh, what the Commissioner said is exactly right. Um, the unemployment insurance program is designed to pay benefits to individuals that are unemployed through no fault of their own. And so if there is suitable work that is available, and if an individual does not have good cause for refusing that suitable work, then unemployment insurance compensation is not payable. And certainly for those employers out there that have the same question as you do, Gabriel, we do want to know that. And we've actually put information out on our website about how to report that to us. We've sent out um, information in our last employer newsletter about how to report that. And, um, and then we also sent out an email blast to our employers about how to report that. We want people to go back to work. Um, as far as the other <clears throat> uh, issue that uh, Senator Bronkowski requested that I speak to, there is an extreme amount of complexity with regard to programming an unemployment insurance system to respond to these various programs that have been passed by Congress. And so Congress passed a program that provided for this additional $600 payment, and they, they, did, they did so with a flat payment of $600 because to, for states to try and implement a program that would be flexible as far as an individual's earnings versus a flat payment would, would have taken states months, like six to 12 months to get into production. And so certainly um, a program that just has a flat amount, $600 for everybody, was 
so much easier for states to implement and get money out the door and money to people that was needed. And, and so for that reason, um, Congress passed a program that had a, a flat amount for everyone. And so in doing so, though, certainly, as Senator Murkowski pointed out, there are situations where individuals are making more or getting more, not making, but getting more in unemployment insurance than they would be if they were working. With that said, though, it is still a requirement of the unemployment insurance program that individuals be able and available to accept full-time work. And so if work is available and an individual does not have good cause for refusing that work, that is an issue. And that's an issue that we want to know about. And employers should report that to us. All right, thanks. Next up, we're going to go to Jay and Ketchikan. Good evening, Senators. Good evening, everybody, the commissioners, director. Now, I'm a sole proprietor and self-employed in Ketchikan, and I'm very active in the visitor industry. There are a lot of self-employed people in Southeast Alaska till today. We've been filing unemployment through the new portal, through the old portal. Till today, we haven't seen a penny. And it's May 7th. Uh, uh, I mean, today, for example, if we had cruise ships in Ketchikan, we would have had 7,200 people. In my store alone, I would have picked up about 18 to 20,000. But where am I at? Zero. And on the other hand, we applied for EIDL and PPP. And the first round was done. We haven't heard anything. They sent us a generic email yesterday saying that uh, uh, we are in line and we'll hear soon from the SBA. The other thing is the governor authorized $300 million to go to small business, and that hasn't matured through the legislature because now they're thinking that they will apply that to bigger companies or companies that already have existing loans. So where do we go from here? Because 56% of the workforce works in tourism. 40% of that is uh, directly associated with cruise ships and cruising industry. And you know cruise ships and cruising lines are canceling uh, sailings to Alaska for the 2020 season. <clears throat> we need some guidance. We need some somebody to put a foot down and at least get us our EIDL loans. We don't want a handout. We'll pay the loans back, but we need to survive. I've been here 24 years. I know people that have been here uh, 30 years, 50 years are in the same boat. So can somebody help? So, Jay, let me speak to the to the issue about the EIDL. Um, what what I uh, learned this evening was that if you have received a number from the SBA, so you indicated that you got a, an email back, um, and if you have received a number for your application, it should be a 10-digit number, and uh, the if if it is if the 10 digit is pre, has a prefix of 3 in front then you are in line for for that loan application to be processed you the the, the challenge that we are facing right now is that the SBA is only accepting new applications for the EIDL program if you are in the agriculture sector. This is a determination that came out of, of SBA on Monday. This is, again, as I mentioned in my opening comments, this is contrary to the understanding of, I believe, every, every member of Congress. We did allow for uh, those in the agriculture sector to to participate in in the second round of the EIDL funding, but I don't think anyone anticipated that it would be exclusive to uh, 
uh, the ag sector. And that is the determination that came down on Monday. Now, this is something that, that we disagree strongly with. And again, I support our farmers, but I also recognize that there are many, many businesses, such as yours, for whom the EIDL is, is, a, is a program that would, would work for them. So I, I wish that I had better news to tell you um, about uh, an opportunity for additional resources, but I think I can share with you that if you have that 10-digit number beginning with a three, um, you are in the queue for processing of your loan. But I could not receive any assurances in terms of the timeliness on this. You are frustrated about this program. Um, your delegation is equally frustrated. Uh, oh. As far as the, as far as the um, unemployment insurance, I think I think that the the first payments under the um, uh, expanded unemployment are for those independent contractors, the gig economy workers. I think that those are supposed to go out uh, this week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so this is Director Westcott, and, and if I may speak to the Pandemic Unemployment Compensation Program, which is the program for the self-employed independent contractors and gig economy workers. I certainly understand the frustration of Alaskans that are in that sector of, of our population. This is a brand new program that, frankly, not just Alaska, but every uh, state's unemployment insurance program has has never um, uh, served before. And so it's a brand new program that we have had to stand up and we are working on that. And typically a, a, a new program such as this would take at a minimum nine to 12 months to stand up. And so while I understand that Alaskans are frustrated and I absolutely pr appreciate everybody's patience I, I'm amazed that we were able to get our application online within four weeks. Uh, and as Senator Murkowski just mentioned, we will be testing our first payment for pandemic unemployment compensation tomorrow. Um, we have to do a test run to make sure that the system doesn't crash because it's a brand new system, but we anticipate being able to get the bulk of our pandemic unemployment compensation payments out the door next week. So relief is coming. And, and again, I know that it's very difficult. The wait has been hard for those individuals that are self-employed independent contractors and gig economy workers. And I appreciate your patience, but relief is coming. So thank you. So and in Jay, addition to uh, that, it's, for uh, it's Senator Sullivan. And one of the things that I, I really appreciate you, um, calling in and, uh, you know, expressing your frustration. Uh, there is money left in the PPP program, and as we mentioned, if you actually uh, have additional uh, employees in the summer, maybe one or two because of what would typically be a lot of business in the summer, you can actually use the number of employees you had last summer, any 12-week period from May 1 through September 15th for the application of your uh, PPP program. And uh, the money had run out in that first tranche, you were correct, but it was replenished about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, there's still a fair amount. I think the last number I saw was over $100 billion. So um, I would encourage you to continue to also focus on PPP. You can reach out to the delegation's office in Ketchikan. The number there is 907-225-6880. But I would also uh, strongly encourage you to reach out to your uh, local bank on the PPP issue and... Um, Keep trying on that because there is money once it got replenished, and that's another area that hopefully can cushion you during these very challenging times that you're, you, know, you are experiencing and so many others are. 
And Senator Sullivan, this is the commissioner, if I may. For Jay, the pandemic unemployment compensation, I would encourage you to continue to file your weekly certification um, so that you can establish that eligibility for when that retroactively goes back to when unemployment uh, began because those payments will be made re retroactive. Thank you, Commissioner. Next up, we're going to go to Colleen in Homer, who's got a question. Hi, and thank you so much for everything all of you are doing to help us. I really appreciate that. I actually have two questions. The first one is that in order to get self-employment, the pandemic unemployment um, benefits, you first have to apply for regular unemployment, wait for a denial, and then you apply for the pandemic unemployment. And I'm wondering why a self-employed person can't just go directly to the pandemic unemployment application because it's wasting time for the unemployment um, technicians to you know, process that, and it's also taking time for the applicant. My second question is, my husband is stuck overseas, has been trying to get back since the third week in March. And I have actually had a wonderful agent in the Anchorage office that I put her on speakerphone and my husband on speakerphone on a different phone and have them talk to each other. But when she gets to the point of, are you in the U.S.? and he's not, it cancels everything. She can't go any further, and she said it would be considered fraud to continue the application. So he is instructed to wait until he is able to get back and then file. And I'm just wondering why there couldn't be a drop down. If you're not in the U.S., you pick a choice or other and explain why, because it's the pandemic that's causing governments to cancel or put a travel ban on international flights. So thank you very much. So, so this is, so this is Director Westcott, and, and I'll um, address both of your questions. So as it is a requirement um, that an individual not be eligible for regular unemployment compensation in order to qualify for the pandemic unemployment and comp compensation, and that's why you have to file for a regular claim and then file for the PUA claim. But you don't have to wait in between. You can file for both at the same time. Like if you go online through My Alaska and file your regular claim, you can then immediately move on to the pandemic unemployment assistance claim and file that one. So there's no delay there. And if you experienced a delay, I would guess that maybe it was before we got our PUA application online. As far as your husband being overseas, there are uh, federal requirements with regard to um, being able to play, pay unemployment insurance to an individual that is not currently in the United States. The United States has reciprocal agreements with individuals that are living in Canada uh, and Puerto Rico and Guam and the Virgin Islands and other, that, other than that, we do not have reciprocal agreements with any other country outside of the United States. And so if someone is residing in a country that is other than that, they cannot legally file for unemployment insurance. Hey, Director Westcott, it's Senator Sullivan. Um, just a real quick question. Is there any way that Colleen's husband can apply because this is an extraordinary time, and apply and then get the money back paid once he gets home so you're not sending it overseas. And then, Colleen, if you want to, one of the elements of battling this pandemic that we've been working on the delegation, there's been dozens of Alaskans, tens of thousands of Americans stuck overseas. So we've been working with this State Department task force to track and get Alaskans home. And I don't know if uh, you have checked in with us on trying to get your husband home, but we've been doing that for dozens of Alaskans to get them home, and uh, we've had a lot of success. So maybe you could reach out to our office if, if, if you're trying to get them home and there's an issue, we can definitely work with you on that but 
Director Westcott, can you answer my question on, you know, back pay once her husband got home? So it's not like you're sending it overseas. Is there a way to do that? Um, respectfully, Senator Sullivan, as, per, as long as the individual is not in the United States or not in one of the areas that we have a, a reciprocal agreement with, we would not be able to make retroactive payments. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next up, we're going to go to Linda Starr in Anchorage, who's got a question. Hi. Um, first, can I say thank you to Commissioner Ledbetter, because I did apply for unemployment um, in April, and, and I have been receiving it, and it, it started right away and without any delay. And so thank you for, um, for putting everything together so well. And uh, But my question is, um, after after being um, after having received two weeks of unemployment, now I've been called back to work, but only at part-time hours. And so what I wanted to know is, um, should I still continue um, to to file weekly certification so long as I'm I'm the reason I'm on part-time hours is because of the the COVID-19 response, and and also my employer has not received any paycheck protection money or or any other support money from the government, and so it's uncertain that I can that they can continue paying me in the future. I don't know, you know, it's like they said, come in now, but just for four hours a day, and um, so. It, I just need to know, do I continue filing the weekly certification or am, am, is, is that the end of it for now? So thank you for the feedback you provided to us. And the short answer to your question is yes, continue to file your certifications. Um, as long as you are underemployed, under the, the normal amount of full-time hours, um, unemployment eligibility is still in place. And so Director Westcott, if you want to add to that, feel free to do so. Sure. So thank you, Commissioner, and thank you for the question. This is an excellent question. Um, so, And that is true. So as long as an individual is not working full time, there is the potential that they would be eligible for a partial benefit. As long, and so you would have to file or you should file, and when you file, you should report your wages for the week. But it's quite possible that you would be eligible for a partial benefit. And that partial benefit would then also include the additional $600 um, federal pandemic unemployment compensation. Okay. Next up, we're going to go to Laura Cox in Houston. Yes, hello. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. Hello, Laura. Yes, I had a question. I'm a micro business, self-employed, and I applied first for the regular unemployment, and then I then I found out on April 20th I could do the pandemic unemployment. I received uh, on when I go to check my status, it says that I'll be uh, receiving an email. And I have not received an email, and I also do not have a confirmation number after when I when I check my status. And they're talking about this weekly filing. I have not, I do not know how to do a weekly filing, so I don't want to lose out on something that I'm not sure how to uh, how to do it. So this is Director Westcott. Thank, thank you so much. Um, we are still working on the fiscal piece of the program that will pay the pandemic unemployment assistance benefits. And, and as I mentioned earlier, we expect to have our first payments out the door. We're going to do a test payment tomorrow and make sure that everything is working okay and the system doesn't crash. And so we expect to have our first payments out the door next week. So it sounds to me like you've done everything right. If you're having trouble filing your weekly claim certifications, what I would encourage you to do is contact our Unemployment Insurance Claim Center, and they can take those claim certifications for you so that you don't lose out on any benefits. Because once we get the fiscal piece in place to be able to pay those benefits to the self-employed, it will be retroactive. So we will take back weeks for you. Just give us a call. 
Thank you, Director. Next up, we're going to go to Kelly Ewell, who's got a question. Hello, this is actually her sister, Billy Clem, and we live in Skagway. And my sister has been having a difficult time trying to get her exhausted benefits um, information, extended um, information. And, and she's having an awful difficult time trying to get it together for – she hasn't received any sort of benefits at all. And when she calls in and talks to them, she also has issues with the, uh, the federal piece of that. So, so this is Director Westcott. If I understand the situation correctly, your sister has exhausted her regular benefits? That is correct. At the end of March, okay. the end of March she exhausted them. Oh. Okay, so there's a couple of things that are in the works. Um, so first of all, this is the first payable week for extended benefits in the state of Alaska. Um, and so we are working on the programming for that. We expect to be able to pay extended benefits as soon as next week. Um, the second part of that is the CARES Act, which was supported by Senator Murkowski and Senator Sullivan, provided for 13 weeks of what is called pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, which would add 13 weeks of benefits to her claim. So what I would recommend that your sister do is contact one of our UI claim centers and uh, file her claim for, at this time we're ta when we take the claim, we're taking it for both extended benefits and for the pandemic uh, emergency unemployment compensation. And so what I would encourage your sister to do is contact our claim center and file that claim so that we can get those benefits in place for her. Will that be retroactive back to April then? Ex the first payable week of extended benefits is this week. Once we get all the programming in place for the, the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, it would be retroactive back to April. So we're still working okay. on getting the we're still working on getting the programming in place for the pandemic emergency compensation. But if she files now, she'll at least start getting the extended benefits and then we can retroactively pay her for the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation. Thank you for that information. We have a lot of people here in Skagway that are really struggling with that. Sure. All right, thank you, Director. Next up, we're gonna to go to Michelle in Fairbanks, who has a question. Good evening. Um, first, I wanna say thanks for all the good work that the Alaskan people are doing. I think it's really awesome. I'm one of those small cogs in a big wheel and no matter how squeaky I get, I don't seem to be able to generate um, any income. My biggest question is this. I've applied for just about everything that an independent contractor can and haven't qualified for anything. I have applied for the um, pandemic unemployment, and my basic question is, I did the regular unemployment first and was denied that, and I've gotten three letters regarding that. As far as the pandemic, whenever I've gone to check um, my status, it says you will be notified by email. But I don't even know, does that mean I'm in the queue? Do, I would just like to know, do I qualify? I understand everything's retroactive. I don't mind waiting. The people in Fairbanks have been awesome. My bills mount up. I call them, and they say, you know what? We get it. You don't have any income. You just wait till you get some. Well, I would just kind of like to know, am I going to get some? So I have tried calling the unemployment office numerous times. I know they're busy. Um, today, for example, I spent two hours on the phone, talked to three different people, very pleasant people, but could not help me could not give me information, but assured me they would put me in touch with someone who could. And the last person after the third person I talked with um, hooked me into a number with a recording 
that basically said, stay on the line. I stayed on the line, and I got a recording saying, thank you for calling. If you want to check anything, go to whatever it is online, have a good day, and hung up on me. So, as you can imagine, I'm pretty darn frustrated. Um, So how Mm -hmm. can I find out if I even qualify for anything? Yeah, so... So thank you so much for your comments. I, I really ap- appreciate that feedback. This is D- Director Westcott, and, and I, I do appreciate your feedback. Uh, um, the pandemic, you know, we are still working on all of the programming pieces to get the Pandemic Unemployment Compensation Program up and running. Uh, it, it's kind of been a phased-in approach where we, we first got the application online so that people could file. We're now working on that fiscal piece that – notifies individuals of how much they're eligible for. We have several things that are going to, when I say production, it means we've been working on the uh, computer programming to get them into the system. And so we've got several things that are going into production uh, tomorrow and over the weekend so that by next week people will be able to log in and have better information as to what their eligibility is and what they're entitled to. So I am very sorry that it's been so frustrating and so confusing for you. Um, we Again, we are working on that. And, and by Monday, you should have better information when you go to log in to your particular claim. And as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be making payments uh, under the pandemic unemployment compensation starting this weekend. Okay, just to clarify, so if I check in to check on my pandemic payments, they will tell me if I qualify or don't qualify um, next week? Yeah, right. like right now, it's telling everybody that they don't qualify because, because we're still working on that fiscal piece. And so anybody that's in your shoes right now, when they go to log in, it's going to say, yeah, you don't, you, you don't qualify for anything. Um, but we are putting those pieces to production this weekend, and so next week you should be able to log in, and everything will be updated with what you qualify for, as long as you have applied for pandemic unemployment compensation. Yep, I did. So thank you very much okay. for the information. I'll check that out mm-hmm. on Monday. Thank you. Next up, we're going to go to Vivian in Petersburg. Has got a question? Yes, good evening. Thank you for taking my call, and also thank you for allowing all of us to have a voice and to express our concerns and ask questions. With that being said, I guess I'm a little confused about the PUA. Do we file that every week? I was under the impression that we filed for that once, and then continued on with the state regular UI process. I have never received an email from PUA. Uh, However, I do get uh, regular mail, as we call it, snail mail, and uh, email about my UI claim uh, every week after filing, uh, but I've never received anything about the PUA. So this is... So thank you for that. So this is Director Westcott, and and again, um, PUA is a brand new program that we are still working on getting the various pieces into production in order for it to function um, as someone would expect for it to function. And so the short answer to your question is, yes, you need to continue. You, You filed your initial application, and that's great. But on a weekly basis, just like with regular unemployment insurance, an individual filing for pandemic unemployment compensation will need to file their weekly claim certification just like they would for regular unemployment insurance. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your help this evening. Next up is Rocco in Anchorage, who has a question. Uh, Hello. Uh, Senators, thank you for all your hard work. I appreciate everything you're doing for us. And the question I have is the hospitality industry is hit pretty hard by this thing. Um, You can't work from home. You can't, um, it's impossible to 
social distance. So, and most people in the hospitality industry work two jobs. They, they work lunch or breakfast somewhere and then they work dinner somewhere else. So if I'm getting called back for two hours a day at one job and two hours a day at another, um, how, do, how does that pay my bills and how does that affect my unemployment? So this is Director Westcott, um, and what I would say is, well, number one, file for unemployment insurance. Number two, well, yes. And, and and so number two, one, when you file your weekly claim certifications, you will need to report whatever wages that you earned during the week. Um, the first fifty dollars of wages is basically free and clear. Um, after that, we we do deduct uh, 75 cents on the dollar from your unemployment insurance benefit amount. But as long as you are eligible for even a partial unemployment insurance benefit on the state side, you would still be eligible for the additional $600 federal pandemic unemployment compensation. So you should continue to file if you're working part-time. And even if you have two jobs, that will be fine. Yeah. I mean, when you file, you need to report all of your well, of course. work. You need to report all of your work and earnings, regardless of whether it's one job or two jobs or three jobs. I appreciate your help. Thank you. All right, next up, we're going to go to Cindy in Juno, who's got a question. Hi there. Thank you guys for the uh, thanks for the uh, meetings that you hold. I appreciate it very much. I filed for unemployment four weeks ago. Haven't received anything. I get the letter saying that, yes, you filed, and we have a question about your eligibility. Nobody has called me. When I call in, to try to talk to somebody you cannot get through. Um, the lady in Fairbanks, you know, she was on hold for, you know, a couple hours and then, you know, got the thing saying, thank you for calling. Um, the paperwork I get says that you can use the Victor system. Well, you can't. And it even says you can use the Victor system online when you go to your web page. And if that isn't available, can you please remove it from your information? Um, I'm frustrated. I've got bills to pay. I need medication, and I can't even talk to anybody from unemployment. So I think I've been patient for four weeks. I think I should have heard something by now. And I finally did talk to um, a gentleman by the name of Rick about three weeks ago, and he says I haven't been assigned anybody, and I would hear in a couple days, well, that was three weeks ago. Uh, two weeks ago, I called Lisa's office, and her people there are awesomely um, responsive, and the young lady I talked to said she would uh, forward my concern on to people higher up in the unemployment system, and I still have not heard back from unemployment. So I'm really frustrated, and what do we do? You know, I was told that as long as you have a confirmation number, eventually you will get it, but um, I don't like having my bills rack up, and I'd like to be able to go buy a few groceries and get my medication, but I cannot do that. Yeah, so Cindy, this is Director Westcott, and I am um, I'm very sorry to hear that you've had such a struggle getting through to um, our claim centers and not having a response. And what I would really like for you to do is email um, our, our call center, um, and I can give you the email address. It's A-U-I-C-C at alaska.gov. And if you could please email our call center, we will make sure we get you taken care of. And again, I'm very sorry that you've had such a, a, a difficult time getting through and getting a response from us. Well, it's very frustrating. And uh, I don't even know if the $600 a week will be on that or not because nobody will answer my questions. And um, 
it's it's just very frustrating because I would rather be working, but I permanently lost my job because of this. So I would, you know, I'm not asking for much. I just would like for somebody to take the initiative and take care of my problem. And I'm sure there are other people that are very frustrated too, you know, from the sounds of it. I mean, we're being patient. Uh, my landlord is trying to be patient, but my landlord has bills to pay too. So, I mean, it's, it snowballs. Yeah, no, and and to, again, I I I I can I appreciate your frustration. I'm very I'm so sorry that you've had such a struggle. Um, let me just go back to one thing that you said, and that is that if you are eligible for regular unemployment insurance, the six hundred dollar pandemic unemployment compensation is automatic. It's it's not a question of not being eligible for that. So as long as you're eligible for regular unemployment insurance, the $600 will kick in. But again, what I would request that you do is email us and so that we can get you taken care of. And Cindy, this is the commissioner. If you email us this morning, I can guarantee you you're going to get a phone call tomorrow morning. Yes, that that's correct. All right, thank you for that. You know what, we're running up against the the hour, uh, but I wanted to leave a few few seconds for the senators to give some kind of closing remarks before we uh, close up shop here. So I, I'll turn it over to Senator Murkowski. Thank you, and I want to thank uh, you, Commissioner, and uh, you, Director, for for your uh, your willingness to to be with Alaskans tonight, um, and and the. Uh, efforts to to work individually. I think we we all we all hear the frustration, the concern. Um, there is real anxiety, and um, Alaskans are are afraid. They're anxious. Uh, they're angry. Um, it's hard, but uh, I I do think that uh, that some of the frustration that we've heard tonight from so many has been have been from those who are are uh, the sole proprietors, self-employed, uh, those that are in this new expanded category. So my hope is that uh, as, as the system is now coming online, so many of the concerns that we've heard tonight will be addressed in this following week. And I, 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 know, I, I know that the folks at the state probably uh, hope that as well. Um, this is this is a very difficult and challenging time for all of us. We are trying to to respond as as rapidly as we can, uh, working within systems that don't often uh, uh, respond as rapidly as we can. And so we've we've asked for for patience, but know that we share the frustrations uh, that so many of you have uh, as well as we try to work the channels back here in Washington. So we'll, we'll continue to commit to be there for you, to, to, to try uh, to, to navigate with your individual issues. Please contact our offices, our staffs. We're overwhelmed too, but as Senator Sullivan said at the outset, uh, this is our job. We work for you and um, we're trying to do it round the clock. So we ask you to 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 be well, and um, uh, we will we will be working through this together. So thank you and good night. So I just want to add on to what Senator Murkowski mentioned first by thanking uh, Dr. Ledbetter and Director Westcott again. Uh, you you both are demonstrating your deep knowledge of the system and your. Uh, steadiness and compassion in your answers tonight. Uh, we're very appreciated. We'll probably have you on a Teletown Hall again soon. So thanks. Thank you for that. I just want to add on to a little bit of what Senator Murkowski mentioned, um, that when we, when we were developing the CARES Act, uh, on a lot of the different elements of the program, the idea, as I mentioned, was to get massive resources out to our fellow Alaskans, fellow Americans as quickly as possible. And the way we thought that would work is not to create a new government program or a new federal structure, but to get the 
get the resources out through existing structures. So, for example, the economic impact checks, a lot of that is through your existing tax ID or Social Security. The PPP checks, and again, there's some frustration there, but as I mentioned at the top, um, through our uh, local community banks and credit unions. And the unemployment uh, expansion from the CARES Act through our existing state of Alaska unemployment insurance programs. So, of course, when you're combining these different federal programs into existing infrastructure, it's going to create friction. And I think that's what we're seeing. And um, we, we appreciate hearing these questions. I really want to thank the people who actually ask the questions. I think it takes a lot of courage to ask questions in these challenging times to you know, talk about your own personal situation and share your concerns. So I, my, my hat goes off and my heart goes out to everybody who was asking these questions because they were really good questions. I guarantee you hundreds of other Alaskans had the same questions. And so um, if you didn't get a chance to ask a question, as Mike Anderson is going to say, stay on the line. We will work with the division uh, directors, Dr. Ledbetter and Dr. Westcott, to answer if they're related to unemployment. And we will get back to you. And please continue to call our offices. Uh, like uh, Senator Murkowski said, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're here to serve. Can't always have you know, fix the problem, but certainly we'll put our heart and soul into every individual question that we get. So understand the frustrations. We share it, and we will continue these teletown halls to get as much information out to everybody and also uh, try to address your individual concerns. So thanks again for taking the time to be with us. Stay healthy, and um, we will get through this stronger but it's going to take some time.